Hey guys, it's Jessie. So first things first, I have several cats in my room and my dad is walking around doing household stuff. So if you hear any noises in the background, other than the whirring from this camera that I'm going to fix, um, that's what those are. Um, so yeah, just bear with me on the fact that I have six cats, which I am making a cat tour video and that should be out pretty soon. Without further ado, let's get on to my review of The Cursed Child. If you can't tell already, I kind of wish I was a booktuber, but I don't read fast enough to be a booktuber, so I'm doing what I can. Anyways, this is not going to be spoiler free. It's pretty much only going to be a gush, because I love The Cursed Child. Um, if you don't want to be spoiled, the only thing that you need to know is that I thought that this was a five-star play. Like a five-star script. Because this is not a book. This is a seven hour play, which just like blows my mind that it's a seven hour play because you have to go back for two days, okay? So you get there, three hours watching the show, you come back the next day and you watch it again, but not again, you watch the second part, but still. It's a seven hour play. So how I read this play was with two of my friends on a road trip in and out of Ohio back to Pittsburgh. Um, so, yes. And it took us 10 hours to read this, which is kind of long considering that the play is 7 hours, but it took us 10 hours to read this because um, we would just stop and like talk about like our theories and like our headcanons and like stuff like that, which was really fun and really awesome. And I've never had like an experience like this with Harry Potter because I didn't get into Harry Potter until after the seventh book was released. Um, because, fun fact, for most of my childhood I was actually terrified of Harry Potter. First of all, can we just talk about the artwork? Because it's beautiful. For the longest time I had no idea that this was a tiny child inside of this nest thing. Which turns out to be an augury, which is just like a gigantic symbol of the book. Play. Of the play! Honestly, 50 points from Ravenclaw every time I call this a book. First things first, in terms of the plot, um, my critiques are that it was kind of like a crack fanfiction, and that the whole plot kind of revolved around Cedric Diggory, and that there was a lot of time travel. But then, my gushes are that it was like a crack fic, um, and that the time travel, like, eventually made sense. Um, but I can't forget the Cedric thing. I'm just not a Cedric fan. I don't like characters that are just like, he's just too good. He's too nice. Harry's nice. But then he's also like sarcastic. And like, I guess like Cedric is brave and courageous and also very kind. But for some reason, I just don't feel like he's that substantive. Like, it's fine and great to be like a good person, but I love dark characters. Like, I love Snape a lot. Just, like, gotta get that out there. I love Snape. Um, recently I tagged a Tumblr post that was about Snape saying that I love Megamind. Because I do. <laughs> I just like characters that aren't good. Like, he, Megamind ends up turning out good, but that's a story for another time. I love that this is kind of like a crack fic because I love My Immortal. I love all of the Very Potter musical musicals, which I would also probably put in the crack fic genre just because, like, they're kind of nutty, they're kind of weird, they're really funny, and like I found that a lot of this play was also very funny. I'm all here for crack fix, like as long as this is entertaining, I don't care what it's about, I'll stick with it. But I also do tend to like crack fic kind of things, so like my favorite movies are Zoolander and Turbo. Anna Karenina aside, I know that I said that that was my favorite movie in another video, but that's another story for another time. It did kind of like play up to like nostalgia and like pandering to nostalgic fans, but like this is the most hyped series of all time. Like you can't just be like, oh no, like we're gonna give them the opposite of what they want. Like this play is sold out for two years. People have paid like hundreds of dollars to see this. Like no, you're not gonna be like, oh and now Lily and James had a terrible marriage and Ginny and Harry are miserable, like, no, no. And in terms of characters, like, and relationships, um, 
the Potters don't actually have like a perfect family, which is fine. Like that's normal, and like I liked that. It was kind of, it it added like a realistic element to Harry's future. So I like that, and and the Granger Weasleys because I love this. This is Hermione had her name hyphenated to be Granger Weasley, and Rose is Granger Weasley, and I just think it's perfect. Like it's so her. Honestly, I was surprised. I was surprised by how much like I didn't know about the plot before like going into it because um, basically what we were given like the gist of the plot was the same thing as a fan fiction that I wrote in like 2012. Um, link down below, and it just like I felt like what is it even about? And then like it ended up not being anything like my fan fiction, and actually was really good. And I feel like it was not like any like Harry Potter fan fiction. Um, which I would consider this like published fanfiction because it's not really written by J.K. Rowling. She was kind of a consultant on the project, but like mm, she didn't really write it. She didn't write the script. So, so in terms of characters, so my critiques again. We're gonna go critiques first, and then gosh. So um, obviously I hate Cedric. Like why? I wish that there had been more Rose Granger Weasley. I thought that she was a completely like underrated character because they basically like wrote her out of the second half of the play. I kind of wish that there had been more Ginny, obviously. My two favorite characters of the next generation, like other than Scorpius, Scorpius is my favorite, like always. Rose is also kind of a favorite, um, but mostly just in my head canons. Um, I really wish that there had been um, Teddy and Victoire because they're just my OTP. They're just so cool. Like, I wish I was Teddy. Also kind of wish that there had been more Neville. Um, and also I thought that the villain, Delphi, could have had a better backstory. Like, I would have been more impressed if it had been like, oh, some character that we already knew, um, like, had a clone or went back in time. Because the whole book is going back in... The whole play is going back in time. Or had, um, what else is there? I wish that, like... She's supposed to be like Bellatrix and Voldemort's kid, which like, no one's surprised. No one. But, like, I wish that, you know, it wasn't Bellatrix's kid, like, I wish that it was like, Bellatrix herself, like, had taken like a polyjuice potion, or like, had done stuff and like, she's back, like, I just like, I feel like it's kind of a contrived plotline and story piece to like, have it be Voldemort's kid. Like, granted, the entire book is literally the cursed child. But, like, my friends and I were saying this as we were reading this, like, isn't every character in this play a cursed child? Now on to the character gush, which I'm sure is the best part. I know it's the best part. The characters are the best part. I love these characters. So, fan fave is Scorpius Malfoy. First of all, he's funny, he's cute, he's adorable, like, he's just so amazing. I know that he's, like, the main character alongside Albus. But I wish that this was just a play about Scorpius. Like, all I want to know is his life. Like, I love him so much. Um, and I always have. Like, he's definitely always been, like, my favorite character because, like, I can envision him just, like, having this, like, different future than, like, what Draco's, you know, story was in the original series. And, like, I just really love him. Like, I love when characters have potential. I just love characters with potential to have taken a different path, or to still take a different path. Um, and Scorpius is set up with this, like, his family's kind of, you know, evil and dark, and like his family, like, supported the the Dark Lord, <laughs> Voldemort. <laughs> um, and he just, like, is so sweet and kind and genuine, and like, he loves Albus. Albus and Scorpius, OTP. Not Scorpius and Rose, which was what I was originally gonna do with my fanfiction but cutting that fanfiction because this is too good. I also did really enjoy Albus. I thought he was like super moody and just like angsty and he's like, Dad, I'm not the perfect kid. And Harry's like, but that's okay. And Albus is like, man, but you don't get it for real. And Harry's like, kind of wish you weren't my kid sometimes. And then that's when the plot messes up. But I love that. It's like fifth year Harry but like in a tiny child body and like with a better friend who I love more <laughs> like I love Ron and Hermione but like they don't compare to Scorpius like I'm so sorry they just don't Scorpius is like the kind of person that like I wish I could be and like I wish was my best friend my cat just bumped the camera I also did really enjoy Harry being like a struggling dad like it was surreal high-key fave characters the trolley witch like 
the trolley, which is, I think I might, I can't read this. You have to experience it for yourself. Like, I can't express to you. Like, I love the trolley witch so much. Trolley witch is now my Twitter name. Okay? Add me on Twitter. Trolley witch. <laughs> it, just search it. It's still at Jessie Quinn, but it's the trolley witch. Um, which is maybe in the running for a channel name, but probably not. <laughs> so, uh, she actually inspired these nails. She did inspire these nails. There's always that. Um, she's super cool. <laughs> it's... The entire scene with her is like, I feel like I'm watching Spongebob and the Polar Express at the same time, and like, it's weird, and I love it, and it was like definitely the first moment of like, absolute absurdity in this play, that it just, I don't know, like, I love things that like, make no sense, and it just didn't make any sense, and it felt like allusions to other things. Speaking of which, there's a very direct Shrek reference in this play, and I'm very appreciative of it. Um, this is like Amazon messed up and it took me a while to start feeling better and to actually have the book in my hands in order to film this video. But now that both of those things are in line, that's why I'm filming this. By now you're at the end of the video so you're like, duh, like I know why you filmed this video, but I thought I would tell you anyway. Yeah, so like other than that, like my only other critique is that I wish that it hadn't been such like a, such a focus on like Gryffindor and Slytherin. Like I wanted more house representation, like especially since like Cedric was a huge part of the plot. Like, give me some Ravenclaw. Like, I'm so glad that Albus and Scorpius were both put in Slytherin because, like, that's exactly how it should have been. Like, could not have been any other way. That's the only way for any sort of future gen thing to go because of all of the foreshadowing with, like, Albus being like, well, what if I'm in Slytherin? Well, then, guess what? You're in Slytherin! And it's good! And it's, like, you know, it brings something new to the family and I really felt like they did make him a Slytherin but like obviously not in the like their evil way but like in the true sense of what a Slytherin is I really felt that Albus definitely fit that bill whereas I feel like Scorpius should have been in Hufflepuff based on his personality but I'm glad he wasn't but Rose should have been in Ravenclaw but like I wish that there had been more characters in Ravenclaw and I think that's all I have to say about this play because it was freaking awesome. I think everyone should read it. Read it knowing that it's a play and plays are written as frameworks for the collaborative experience of theater making. Not only do I know this as a theater kid, but I also studied script writing for a few years. These are the bones. This is not the full thing. So you're reading the bones and actually it's pretty darn descriptive for a play. If you are interested in other reviews or anything of The Cursed Child, um, my good friend Ben has made a um, open letter to critics of The Cursed Child and I thought that his video was very succinct and eloquent, um, so you should check it out. Link in the description for sure. Also go and subscribe to him. Happy Voldemort Day and I'll see you next time. People play Nope, that's not right. Um, don't you dare. Okay. Uh, da, 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 I had critiques written down. I wish that my cats weren't climbing all over my room, both put in Slytherin House, Albus and Severus. Nope. That's not right. Anything's possible. What is a word for well-spoken?